Hi, this is Larry Hama, and you're watching Comic Artist Pro Secrets. Hey, welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. I'm Ethan Van Skyver, your host, just a humble ink and superhero merchant. I'm here with two legends. One, two. Two legends. <laughs> I mean, big one, time. Two. <laughs> one, two. One, two. One, two. Okay, Keith good. Giffen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And over here, looking I'm, at his phone. I'm tweeting. It's <laughs> Kevin McGuire. And these two gentlemen are responsible for one of the greatest runs on Justice League of all time. Um, and what day is today? And today is Saturday. It's Justice and it's Justice League, League Day. Day. I oh forgot. It's ju Justice yeah, but this video, this video is going to be up forever, so it doesn't matter what today is. Oh, people are going to be watching this. Justice League Day. People are going to be watching this decades from now. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a commentary for Justice League International number 18, which is Lobo versus Guy Gardner. You got to love that. And uh, let's begin. Yes, ma'am. So here it is. Here's Justice League International um, number 16, number 18. Guy Gardner's not having a nice day, and no, he's not. This is, this looks like a really kind of early version of Lobo. Um, he uh, it's pre it's Bisley, I know that. Yes, it was. Uh, yeah, because originally he had some sorbet kind of costume. Yeah. Yeah. Was just, uh, <laughs> like uh, just, yeah, yeah, just like an orange and purple. Yeah, and then then he, uh, I think it was uh, we put him in the. The jacket, like a, the yeah, like a biker. Yeah, yeah but uh, uh, this is the Lobo, Lobo on the way to becoming the Lobo. Everyone knows. Yeah, before uh, we got uh, hooked on those Bisley steroids. Yeah, exactly. Guy Gardner's got his bowl cut, something that we got rid of. How come? Who, who gave him the bowl cut idea? Was that originally in that, the? That, that was, was originally there. That was first Joe appearance. Staten. That was Joe yeah. State. Did you guys ever think about removing it or changing no. it? No. Two, two more Howard. Two, loved it. I, he, I just, loved I just it. thought it was, that's his big middle finger to people. It's like I wear my hair wherever, however I want. It's great. That's awesome. This is a terrific cover. I love the little tear and the and the pouty lip. Good yeah, job. This was finally, uh, yeah, ending that arc of him being a nice guy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Let's let's crack this baby open here. Boom. So what what year is this? When did this come out? This no probably 88, 89. Uh, we're gonna say 88. 1988. This is a good year. I was in the eighth grade, guys. So this is uh, this is my prime time. This is when I was reading comics. It's um, one of the easiest pages I ever had to draw. I love that, don't you? Because you was, get and it was still late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were you known for being kind of uh, late with a little that bit, one? a little bit. <laughs> really? All right. All right. So let's hear. There's a little coloring mishap, huh? Where? Where? It's supposed to be red. Oh, oh, oh my yeah. god! Very, very good. I never noticed that. It looks good white though. No, it doesn't. No, it's no, terrible. We no, no, gotta no, fix no. that. So talk about this character right here. Gnort. Yeah. Yeah, that was. I, I don't remember how that came about. I think. That, I know there was, we talked about an Art Carney character, yeah, right Norton? down to the sewers, and it, I, who came up with it? I'm assuming Dematis. Because I have no recollection of where Nort came from, except that uh, we wanted a weird Green Lantern, and suddenly it turned into, I, you were the first person who said Art Carney. Was I? Yeah, I think you were the first person, Art Carney, and Carney. it just, the, the, the character just popped out of us. Uh, uh, nobody had any, uh... But it must have had a name, it must have had, yeah. I mean, the whole outfit, yeah. I mean, because if you look, look at, at the uh, nose, that's yeah, look at the nose and all, because uh, people are born like that now. They didn't Nort. have a dog face. G N O R T, Nort. Nort. Wait, oh, Norton. Oh, my God. Yeah. You're just getting that? I'm <laughs> just getting that. I didn't know that. That's fascinating. Yeah. I know, you know, we just did a panel and you uh, mentioned that this was your least favorite character to draw. Yeah. Uh, he's just boxy. He's, he's not. Just a box. who, who designed him? Not you, I guess? Joe State. Joe State. Joe State. Is this Joe State, Art, yeah, is this yes. Arch Enemy? Yes, I think so. I think so. I mean, Joe Staten created Kilowog and, uh, you know, my God, Arisia and so yeah. many other great Green Lantern characters. This was probably not his finest hour, but uh, he was still beloved. This character, very beloved. This character, very beloved. Yes, indeed. And you guys, um, 
What's going on here? Look at these faces on you. I mean, and this was, was this your 18th issue of a comic book that you I'm did? I'm not 18th in a row. I skipped a few. Yeah. But I, I, I'm looking at this and I'm like, ugh. That... <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Me this too. This is painful. Yeah. What about it is painful? What, I don't know, because I, you know, I was, I was like, I was gonna say I was a kid, but I was like 28. But it's, it's the same as anything. You look back at your old stuff and love it. No. Cyberfrog. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, they're, they're welcome to my world. Yeah. No, uh, I did a commentary for Cyberfrog One, and it was uh, disastrous. Believe me. <laughs> but I, mean, I will point out anything that I say. Okay, I'm alright with that. Yeah. I mean, if something yeah, came out good. Yet. Oh, really? Yeah. This isn't good. No, nah, not really. Are you sick? Oh my God. What do you think, Keith? I mean, looking back at this stuff, I mean... I, I, I still love it. Yeah. I, 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 I forgot I'm not coming from the place that Kevin's coming from. Yeah. Hmm. Get us in New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Especially not there. This is gorgeous right here. Nice splash page. Uh, you, you have to do a lot of uh, big shots like this where you just show epic scale in these uh, outer space books. Where, where, did, where did this come from? Where did this shape come from? Where did this... Uh... I didn't design that, so... You didn't? Nope. I, I did that? Uh, I think whoever uh, did the, oh, the that's film right, issue, that's right, that's uh, Design right. Manga Con yeah, and uh, whatever. All, that everything. was Steve Lealoa. Yeah. Steve mm -hmm. Lealoa came up with Manga Con and all. How much of this did you do? I mean, how much of layouts and everything? Because you mentioned doing layouts. I would just for... lay, uh, I would lay, when I laid out the things, I, uh, when it came to any of the tech or something like that, I would just draw in lines. Uh, I, I never meant for the spaceships to be drawn the way I laid them out. Uh, well, that's how he told stories. He tells, yeah, tells them visually. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Rather than typing out panel one, he does this. Panel two, yeah. he does that. He just like it's easier to just sketch something. Yeah. Faster. <laughs> All right. So this character Elron, obviously, let's let's talk about Scientology is that and. Uh, oh yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, this doesn't. This is a primitive version of Elron, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. so so what was the inspiration behind uh, making a a robot vacuum cleaner kind of character out of? The founder of Scientology. I got a feeling that's DeMattis. That's that's that, that, <laughs> that, 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 that's Mark DeMattis. When you really think about it, it fits. Yeah. Yeah. It fits. The founder of Scientology is kind of like a a, a vacuum cleaner a, robot. A vacuum cleaner <laughs> robot that doesn't work. A mechanic, <laughs> a, a mechanical know? object that just sucks yeah. everything. That's just uh, that, that was. I, I'm pretty sure the L uh, L Von name came from uh, DeMattis. Yeah. 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 Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. Because my first reaction would have been who's Elvon. Mm. So you're still not seeing anything you like? No, not yet. What, do you see anything that you particularly dislike? Uh, yes. No. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, not really. Nothing that's. It, it just feels mediocre to you? Yeah, or... pretty much. Oh man, do you hear that, guys? It's crazy. Alright, now this is fantastic. That's Jim Starlin, that's Arthur Adams, that's. What? What? That's no. That's good. that's not good. Uh, I I told you all to point something out I like. <laughs> all right, so here's Lobo again. We're talking about Lobo on the front cover. Can you tell me where Lobo came from and um, the idea? Lobo is the first character I ever drew. It was the the, the first page of the uh, portfolio piece that I got into comics with, uh, and I had no name from. It. it was a figure called Lunatic, and he was introduced at Marvel. And then when I left Marvel, I realized they weren't doing the lunatic character right, and I didn't even do it right. So I brought him over, and uh, Roger Slafer came up with the name Lobo. Mm -hmm. And the character just took off from there. So it was basically a character that I wanted to do at Marvel, but was too too green. I, I, I didn't know how to get it across. So it appeared, in a, uh, lunatic appeared in a few issues of Defenders, but uh, really a crude version. If you look at Lobo and, and the lunatic character, it's probably like a, wow, it's probably like a Roger Corman film as opposed to a Steven Spielberg film. Right. You know, it just wasn't developed enough. That's why I felt okay. I, I can bring the character over here. I kind of know what I'm doing now. Now, that what was, was what was the inspiration behind? Like, was, were you thinking of um, badass biker kind of like Easy Rider kind of no, dude in space? Uh, or? The, 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 the original well, inspiration for Lobo was uh, was Muckery from the Jack Kirby, Simeon and Muckery. 
I don't even know what that is, you but know, now I got to find the out. The characters from the Jimmy Olsen, uh, when Jack Kirby took over Jimmy Olsen, mm -hmm. Ailey with the yellow with the black markings on his face, yeah. in wow. the Evil Factory, mm -hmm. that somehow appealed to me, and that's where the, the idea of the markings and stuff came from. It has to be pointed out, and, and, and this is just to, to Mattis. Let's read this dialogue here. By Fetal's Gizzard, I love you guys. <laughs> Most interstellar life forms make me want to puke, but you guys, my cutesy wootsy flying cosmic type dolphin buddies, I think you're swell. <laughs> That's Lobo. And the funny thing, yeah, the funny thing was that once uh, I remember Mark Demattis asking me because I, 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 when I came up with Lobo, I said these it, dolphins are the only things he cares about. Yeah. And we went for months. Uh, uh, without explaining it. And, and one time, uh, I always Mark will ask me, he said, I, I got asked one thing about Lobo, you know, what's the deal with the dolphins? Even in the Lobo miniseries, he's got the dolphins. And I said, well, if you want the honest to God truth, he goes, yeah, well, put it in, put it in a comic, explain. I said, I can't. And I said, what do you mean? I said, well, after, the, the, the reason Lobo, um, the reason Lobo will not kill the dolphins is that, uh, you usually don't kill after you're done. You snuggle. Oh my god! And that's that's the truth behind Lobo and the dolphins. You heard it here first, I think. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Did you know that? Were you aware of the the nature of Lobo's relationship with the dolphins? Or? Uh, no. No. Okay. Or I might have been completely forgot about it. It was 30 years ago. <laughs> more important things have come up so basically though you did i mean this this lobo here i mean this is this is the shape of lobo to come i think yeah. he just they added um they uh, emphasized the, they emphasized yeah. the markings on his face were they no, markings lobo uh, uh, not lobo uh what's his name busily defined it. yeah they're, they're markings the same way of uh, spots on a dog are markings that's him so he doesn't have a beard he or does have, he he can have a beard he can have the five o'clock shadow but the black around the lips and the black around the eyes is like the Black markings should sound like a, a Dalmatian. Got it's, it. It's part of a. Uh, it's part of who he is. It's not applied. It's Dolphins a, and Dalmatians. Yeah, that's gonna be. Go. <laughs> it's so 80s. That is so like. It's so heavy metal. <laughs> what kind of music were you listening to at this time? Me? Yeah. Very metal. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Keith? I mean, were I'm you? I'm an old punk. Are you really? I'm an old punk. What's your favorite punk band? Dictators. I've never heard of them. The so. Cars and girls. Wow, that's so cool. Were you actually? Did you have a, a mohawk at any no, point? No, I, I never. Kind of the accoutrements of punk. Never had the piercings or or the hair or. or uh, I think I went to uh, CBGBs once, mm -hmm. but uh, I just love the music, and I still love the music. I'm still trapped in punk land. Uh, you know, it's that's. You, know, you, you go through my music. It's all it's all very punk songs. Yeah. 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 And, cool. and embarrassing music. The punk songs and embarrassing music. <laughs> I, I Wait, like everything. Free so. samples? Free samples of, <laughs> ooh, of what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so very cool. Oh, my God. I, you know, this is just stunning to me because if I drew any of this now, I'd be proud of myself. And I'm looking at your face, and you don't seem thrilled. No, not at all. If you, if you could see Kevin's face right now, he's got a little bit of a snarl on his lip as yeah. he looks at his old work. Look how cute. Now, he really did evolve. I mean, by the time I got to him, I had to draw Gnort recently. Gnort. Is it Gnort or it's just Gnort? Gnort. 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 He's silent. I had to draw him recently, and he was just like a... Like Newt. Like Newt. Like, a, he's a dog face boy. I mean, but look, he's got a... His nose is a little bit like mine right here, you know? And he's, he was originally not... It was really more humane than a dog, human than a yeah. dog. It was like a werewolf. I mean, it's, yeah. I would bring that back. If, if I have to draw him again, I'll, I'll, I'll restore him to the way he's supposed to look. He, that could be him as a child and he grows up and, you know, it's changes now. Yeah. Yeah. What about, I mean, does he, is he, how could he be a Green Lantern? I guess he does have willpower, but he's kind of, uh, you know. I think it was explained, uh, uh, I don't know how Mark explained it, but it was sort of like his uncle was a Green Lantern and uh, his uncle died. His and legacy? Mark picked up the ring. It was, this is before the legacy thing of the rings flying off your body and going to find somebody else. Mm -hmm. This is, he just picked it up and became Green Lantern and, and everyone just sort of it's kind like, of accepted it. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Oh my God! Look how cool. Nothing to do with me. Yeah. That's awesome. I love all this stuff. Oh, that's the bonus book. Yeah. Okay. That's right. All right. So we've got Rocket Red again. 
And by this time, look, I mean, it would be easy to confuse this. All right, if I'm an artist and I'm being given this for reference, I'm thinking this is kind Goatee. of a Fu Manchu, Goatee, and yeah, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna grow it out yeah. um, if I get a chance to. So that's interesting. This is just fabulous. Now, what is your process, uh, Kevin, for for doing facial expressions? Do you just you look in the mirror? Do you take photographs? Or... Make it up as I go. Seriously? Yeah. Are you keenly observant of... God, no. No. <laughs> oh, God, no. I don't know. That's fascinating. I will, I'll find myself making the faces that, like, if I'm sitting there, like, working at Starbucks, I'll be sitting there making the face the character makes, but I'm not... I do that, too. Like, you'll see me at there's my desk, of, like... There's a lot yeah, of uh -huh. racing yeah. involved. Yeah. Andrew's like, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing. I'm drawing a character that's snarling. What is this? Nothing to do with us. Let's get through this. Are we us. back? No. Nope. No? No. Nope. So they would basically just have extra stories in well, here. Well, this was a this special issue. No, it's Mark Asquith wrote it. Are you sure? Because I remember that gag is mine. Okay. So they... It's a my gag! Somebody stole a gag from you? What? Explain. I, I've always had this. I've always had these gags back and forth. I even used it in 52. Where a character will walk by holding a bottle and somebody you know, just clank it off their head as they walk by. I've done it dozens of times. That's what I thought in it was In real me. life. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Somebody heard that and said, I'm borrowing that yeah. without asking. It must have been really frustrating, too, to be a fine artist and get this kind of print result yeah. when the book came yeah. out. I mean, it, it's not like that anymore. Yeah. And it almost, you know, it almost inspires you. When, when this is what you get back, why do you put too much in? Like, well, I didn't draw that, so... Well, no, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm saying anyone in general. If that's your end result in terms of printing, then you're not going to sit there and noodle it to death. Um, and do a lot of detail work. How much, how much stuff it's a 16 page. You're kidding. This is crazy. This is like barely you guys. Yeah, really. <laughs> there we go. We're right? We're back? We're back. All right. Yeah, this is cool. I love these, by the way. And this was necessary back then to do these little white halos. Now, who was inking you? Were you happy with it? Al Gordon. Al Gordon. Yeah. Al Gordon. Well, I, were you cool with it? Was there ever a point where you were like, I'd rather ink myself? Oh, not until much later, no. I think uh, Terry Austin did the first issue, and then yes. Al pretty much took over. Yeah. Mm. And then, uh, over. then uh, I think Rubenstein, Rubenstein started the next issues, issue. Yeah. Joe Rubenstein. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, cool. And here's all your guys all lined up. Now, you were saying before, I mean, so much of this book is about kind of the uh, in-between moments. Um, you know, between the action scenes and the bombast and the, and the heroism, this is how these characters interact in the locker room, which was a pretty keen analogy, I thought. Um, and where did that idea come from? And, and I guess you probably encountered a lot of resistance from no, DC. Well, some resistance from DC. The, the, the main thing was, I I still don't. I think the fight scenes are the least interesting part of the book, at least in terms of the story being told. They're more dynamic looking, mm -hmm. but they're the least interesting parts. It's what's building up to the fight scene. It's what happens when Beetle and Booster come back to the headquarters, take off their masks and hit the refrigerator. What? conversations take place in the kitchen follow them home you know see what their life is like that's more interesting to me than watching them go out and beat the shit out of Desperate although I do like a good action sequence yeah. I like choreographing a good action yeah. sequence yeah. but that if, if that's all you've got in the book then you know like one of my favorite things was when we did the the uh, Royal Flush Gang yeah and I, the, I, the I, yeah, and I got to choreograph part of the fight scene and that was yeah. that was probably my favorite bit in the series and and that's I mean yeah well I mean you're looking at it right here I know again this is this is your early work but uh, this is pretty great stuff all in all here look at this close-up here look at that smile and this I, I love this I oh my god you're the man yeah, I'm, a, I'm a man you are the man yeah and so we have a I didn't say a word by the way <laughs> you didn't contradict. You're being Your very kind. Is yes, I think so. <laughs> oh my God! All right. Oh, what the hell happened? With, uh, Tell me what right. you're thinking. Well, that looks really screwed up. Why? He's got scales. Well, yeah, he looks like his head looks suddenly like really big. Yeah. yeah. And it's the cross hatching effect here, but I mean yeah. that carries over. There's just a lot of cross hatching. Yeah. This this you know with better printing that would probably play a little better. Yeah. The, and that's what, being whipped through there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with better color. Well, you know what? I actually like this coloring. I think this kind of, uh, 
you know, simple four color process was really, really effective if done right. And these, I mean, this looks good. I mean, this looks good. It's, uh, oh, come on. See, people are going to listen to this and be like, why doesn't he see what we see? I mean, this still is good stuff. I mean, I know you've grown and evolved, um, but this is uh, damn terrific work. I'm proud to know you. Well, you're the one. Yeah. yeah. More hey, the. What's, his, what's with his pink left leg there? What happened? <laughs> I have no idea. And he's kind of, look, he's ashamed of it a little bit. Like, he, he's aware of it in his posture. I love the bunny slippers here. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you guys are all about. It's yeah. it's those in between that's, moments. That's that's probably the epitome of, uh, of what I was talking about. That's the that's the typical Justice League scene we're reading. shooting for. Yeah. <laughs> Look at his face. Yeah. It's really like he's taking it in. Guy is not an intellectual. I mean, you know, I think he would find that book to be uh, challenging. Um, uh, comics first gay couple, perhaps? No. 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 Just buddies. Buddies. Just buddies. Romance. I like the sound effect there. Smack. <laughs> Boom, schmack. Yeah. Just beautiful. I mean, beautiful, beautiful work, guys. Oh my god. Yeah. Now you're going to tell me that's okay still. It's okay. All right. At least we got an okay. Yeah. He says, I'm back. Why is he saying I'm back? Because, because he he's no longer, he got hit in the head, and now he's back to being the guy uh, Gardner. Gardner that oh. was. Uh... This... I remember we had a debate like, I, I, Dematis wanted the next issue to be called I'm Guy Gardner and You're Not. <laughs> and I wanted it to be called No More Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> what did it end up being called? No More Mr. Mr. Nice Guy. You <laughs> win. Yeah. Yeah. You went. This is really sophisticated in here, and you had to have been using some reference for these, uh, the, the way eyes kind of curl up. Uh, yeah. No. He used to yeah. sit down. Andy Helper used to have him trapped in the office. And a desk by Andy's, uh, 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 a drawing table by Andy's desk. And Kevin would sit there and just draw. There was no reference. He would just sit there and draw, mm -hmm. and it would come out like this. I've seen him do it at conventions. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's pretty astonishing, and his use of color and his commissions, his markers, uh, are absolutely beautiful, and unlike anything else anyone's doing. Just as long. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was it like at this point? Like when, uh, you know, so this issue comes out. What's your general feedback from people? And uh, this was a, a time before the internet. So, what were you hearing from uh, fans or editors? What was the feeling that you got about the job you were doing? They seemed to like what? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Kevin's got something I do. <laughs> what was he talking about? Oh, so I'm, I'm, I just asked him, I just said, so this book comes out, you know, you guys have been on this for a little while. This is before the internet, so you may not be getting direct feedback from yeah. fans. What's your general feeling about the book and the job that you're doing? Are you happy? Are they taking care of you? Uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed doing the book. Um, and <laughs> it's like, it, I, <laughs> like, uh, like I said before, like I said, it's the panel. We didn't go out to make a humorous book. We didn't go out to, uh, uh, well, we wanted to set the world on fire with Justice League, but this was not part of the original plan. We just wanted to do a good Justice League comic. But the humor became the easiest way to do it. We're more interested in the characters when they're, when they're not on. Mm -hmm. And that became something that we, we just, it, it got out of hand. That's all I can say. It got out of <laughs> hand. And by the, it was not until moving day, the issue moving day, that we realized we had something. We started deliberately doing it. Amazing. Yep. Guys, it's a classic run. Thank you so much for joining uh, us on Comic Artist Pro Secrets. And guys, run out and pick this up and pick up all the issues before it and after it as well. Um, and there you go. Just we'll... the omnibus. <laughs> yeah, or get the, the omnibus. omnibus. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. So well, there's it's, a... it's, it's only 150 bucks. <laughs> it's only 150 bucks. <laughs> go do it. <laughs> all right, guys. Take care.